you got to have passion in your life. And I think the biggest thing to figure out is what you what do you what do you really want uh, out of life? I think most people really can't decide what they want. Hi everyone, welcome to another menopause.com podcast. Our guest today needs no introduction, but I'm going to do one anyways. He's one of the most prolific and popular entertainers of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and he still performs today. He's an actor, a singer, a businessman, a producer, a troubadour, and much, much more. He's appeared in hundreds of TV shows, in movies and Broadway shows, and he hosted two of the most popular shows in TV history, The Hollywood Squares, and that's incredible. He's worked with every entertainer and celebrity you can imagine, from Johnny Carson to Carol Burnett to Mama Cass to Sally Field, and he continues to entertain people around the country. So we're honored to have Mr. John Davidson with us today. Welcome, John. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me on. Congratulations on on your ratings. Your podcast is one of the most popular, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, you have not changed a bit. Now, I grew my hair longer because I knew we were going to interview you. And all of a sudden, your hair is now shorter. That's not fair. Yeah, I just, uh, I, a lot of my friends said, you know, you look stupid with long hair. You look like you're trying to relive the 70s. And I said, well, I wouldn't mind reliving the 70s. You know, uh, you and know, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind even your short hair. So, uh, uh, right. <laughs> hey, we're lucky it's, to have hair, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's just that I've gotten used to having long hair, but uh, uh, all of the women in my life over the years have always uh, said it's too long, just, just cut it. So yeah, I, I, I guess I like to keep it short. Now, I when I kind of re- redevelop myself, you know, after after the Hollywood Squares went off. Remember, I was the second host. Peter Marshall right. was the first host. Right. right? But when my stint went off, um, and they and so the third host was Tom Bergeron, you know, but I was the second. So um, I and that's incredible was long gone and, and hosting the Tonight Show. I've had that. Oh, I did that with Carson, not not with Leno. So uh, I my agent said, uh, "What do you want to do with your life? You know, you, you, things are changing. The phone is not ringing as much. You know, <laughs> every career has that." time when uh the phone doesn't ring you know so i what i've always loved best is singing with my guitar i did it in my las vegas show i did a guitar segment and then with the big orchestra but um i love being a troubadour and uh, in the last 20 years i've started writing material comedy material and love songs and and so uh i this is my favorite thing to do so i found this barn i lived in new hampshire and i found this barn in Sandwich, New Hampshire. Uh, I thought I'll put a club there and I'll call it Club Sandwich, which I thought was fairly, <laughs> it, it's rather obvious, but uh, it seemed, seemed like that would work. So, and this is our third season coming up. I open again uh, June 2nd. I play every weekend, Friday and Saturday. And then I present uh, guest performers in between that. So in reinventing myself as this sort of a troubadour folk singer, but I'm not really a folk singer, a lot of country music, um, my roots are on Broadway, but that's very few shows use guitar the way I do on Broadway. So I figured I should ha- I should bring back my long hair that I had, and and so I'll look more like a, a folk singer or an entertainer, not so much like a businessman, you know, or a TV host. And so that that's why I went back to the long hair for a while. But I don't know. Not, Let's not talk about hair. It's okay. Well, you you look great. You look great. But I remember seeing you in Las Vegas at the Hilton, right? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yep. I lived there for a very short time and I live right next to the Hilton. And so I remember going to see you there and it was great. It was you awesome. cleaned the carpets there, didn't you? And I cleaned the carpets there too. <laughs> yes. I picked up the trash. But hey, we're not, you know. Whatever, but um, yeah, you uh, you know, don't worry if the phone stops ringing, you can always be a busker again, right? Yeah, I have tried that. I I busk, uh, meaning a, a street street performer. A lot of people right. in the states don't know what it's kind of a European. Term. Do you know the months of the year? Do you know the months? Sort of. So you can say January when I point to you. All right. Each and every day of the year. January. 
start the year off fine. Yeah, I have bust in uh, New Orleans. I uh, I was in a Broadway tour. I was I was the Wizard in Wicked. I did uh, for a year. I did three different productions of of the touring company from the Broadway show uh, Wicked, and I played the Wizard for three different productions, and it was great. And so I we came through New Orleans, and I I bust. I stood on the corner with my little tip jar in front of me. You know, it was it was fun. It was fun. So, so people, you know, uh, Mike and I have been talking about this. We we're very excited when we were able to uh, get you to be on our uh, podcast because, you know, we're in our 60s. And, and so you, you are you are a cemented memory for us and people in our generation. And I think part of the, of the appeal that you had was not only uh, could you sing, but you could dance and you were funny and you were self-deprecating and you could act. I mean, you don't see a lot of people these days in entertainment that have that kind of variety of skills. Yeah, it is a different thing, isn't it? it really is. Uh, I, I, um, when I first started singing, I was just a singer, though. I wasn't an entertainer. And I, for example, I was on the Carol Burnett show two or three times uh, in the, what was it? well, in the 70s. Number one is the amateur tap dancer, Abner Hollycutt. Come out here, Abner! I don't really care. Howdy, Abby. Oh, he's the one I meant. Yeah. He's the one I meant. Yes, he is. No, no, no. Ooh. Number two is the famous TV star. And uh, they wanted me to do sketches, and then they quickly realized that I can't do sketches like so many other their guests could. I would just, I just didn't, didn't know how to loosen my up self up for that. Then I started playing Vegas, and my Vegas act, I'd always ask the comedian who was opening for me, could you give me a couple of jokes so I can be funny? Because I was jealous of the reaction that com comedians get. Comedians get this incredible thing called laughter and as well as the applause. And I, 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 uh, I really wanted to get, to have the audience react to me the way they were with my opening act. So they gave me jokes, started doing that. And, and uh, I, I sort of did kind of a Dean Martin kind of thing, that sort of thing where you sing and then you're funny in between. And uh, I, I don't know. I. My very first manager who found me on Broadway, his name was Bob Banner. And he found Carol Burnett on Broadway as well. Mm -hmm. In me, it was a show called Foxy with Bert, Bert Lahr, who was the star of the show. He was the Cowardly Lion in Wizard mm -hmm. of Oz, of course. And I played uh, basically his nephew, was a, just graduated from college and came out to visit him in the Yukon. Well, I had just graduated from college and I was, you know, very clean and and spiffy and and so I, I i got the part it was a david merrick show and uh so I, this the television producer bob banner saw me in foxy and said i want to develop your career he said what do you want to do with your career and i said i just want to be a leading man on broadway i want to be like goulet or uh, uh who are some other uh, uh people like anyway i want to be a broadway thing he said no why don't you be everything be a total performer he said, that's the way the greats have done it. So he kind of helped me lay out that. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's do that. So I, I, my acting classes were stepped up and, and I met with uh, 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 comedy writers to get some comedy material, worked on an act, worked on making John Davidson, not just a spear, but a Swiss army knife. Mm -hmm. Mm. So as a Swiss army knife, I could do, I could do Shakespeare. I can do sketches. I can, I can be funny. I can host, I can, and, and um, as well as play a role. But the, the role that I have developed is the role of John Davidson, whatever that is. And I, I think that's the strongest way to be is to just, just assume that you, is to play yourself uh, in different, you know, hyped up because it's a stage. I mean, I can be pretty boring too, but when I'm doing my show, I become a slightly different character. It's me, but I've developed this character of John Davidson in order to entertain. And uh, it, it works, it's been, it's been great. Wow, when you were um, on Hollywood Squares when Peter was uh, hosting it, yeah. Yeah. 
you used to come up with these elaborate answers. I mean, to try to fool the the guests. John Davidson. John Davidson to win two hundred and fifty dollars. Good evening, John. Good evening, Peter. By golly. Uh, what was the name of the boat? The name of the boat in the famous Kane Mutiny. Peter. Yes, John. The boat in the Kane Mutiny, which, as we all know, was the boat that where the men uh, mutinied and uh, <laughs> tried to take it away. It was not called the uh, Kane boat. It was called <laughs> mutiny. It was called in the Kane Mutiny. It, it was called. Uh, 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 it was called the Albatross. The I Albatross. Read that. That's incorrect. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it was called the Kane Mutiny because the boat was called the Kane. And that's why they mutant. It was yeah. not. Yes, it was. It we was. Had $250. And you would come up with these stories that lasted a long time. Now, did you make those up? Or did yeah. you, did writers have that? Because nobody else did that. You did that. And well, you uh, fooled me would... every time, by the way. Every time you nailed me. Well, uh, maybe you needed to get out more. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm just saying, because I, yeah, I, I was just winging it because. <laughs> They see on Hollywood Squares, they couldn't give you the answer and they couldn't give you the question, but they would give you a little joke. All, all of Paul Lynn's stuff were right. totally written. And uh, I couldn't, I didn't know how to deliver a punchline like that. And so I decided, why don't I take this attitude that's a little bit like Professor Irwin Corey? Yeah. Was a, <laughs> where right. he's, an, he's an expert on absolutely nothing. <laughs> and, and yet he pretends to know a lot about it. And, and to go on and on. So that gave me a way of being funny, and, and I love doing it. I love playing that character. Um, and uh, I sat next to Karen Valentine and next to Paul Lynn, who Paul Lynn hated Karen Valentine and hated me. I think we were just too clean. We were too clean cut. And um, Paul Lynn uh, was a real character. I, I don't think he liked himself very much. He, I no, I mean, yeah, just, yeah, that's the stories yeah. you read, uh, you know, I guess. Yeah because yeah. of his sexual orientation and stuff. And at the time that wasn't really accepted in Hollywood. There were some, some issues mm -hmm. with that, but boy, did he deliver. Uh, oh, he was, yeah, he, was so, yeah. he was so great, but yeah. he, he wasn't, he wasn't great at being clever like Tim Conway or Harvey Corman or those, those kind of, or um, uh, the guy with the played banjo with the arrow through his head. Uh, with the, the guy, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's, that's a, th these are real, clowns paul lynn wasn't a clown uh he was an actor who who found this very funny way of you know uh yeah his delivery was awesome <laughs> yeah 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 it was great yeah. so looking back at your career and of course we we're we're all about looking forward and that's why that's another reason we wanted to talk to you is that you know retirement is not doesn't have to be death and boredom and you know for various reasons whether it was that the phone wasn't ringing or you just felt like you had kind of done everything you could do, you reinvented yourself. And with this club and with being a troubadour and now telling jokes and writing funny songs and all that, um, was that just a natural progression or did you have to sit down and say, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? Well, I've done a lot of thinking about, I even tried to develop a show, a show called Second Wind. Um, we all, I think, need to get a second win long about 60, 65. And, and I was going through that and, and I couldn't sell the TV show. But the idea is you've got to be passionate about something. You've got to. Yep. It, you said, I, uh, and I'm very passionate about working on my live show, different ways of different relationships with the audience, different uh, ways of communicating and ways of moving them to laughter, tears or inspiration. And uh, I, I still am singing quite well. I think because of my Broadway training, my voice still, my voice is yeah. singing exactly where I've always sung. I, I might even have a few more high notes because uh, I've worked on my breathing quite a bit. I've studied voice a lot for Broadway, but um, yeah, I'm 81 now. I'll, I'll be uh, 82 in December of this year. And, and uh, I'm singing as well as I ever have I, I, and really quite freely. Um, uh, my point is, what is my point? Oh, so it, in a way, in a way, I wasn't reinventing myself. I, I really probably shouldn't even use that term because I was doing a guitar segment where I sang and played guitar in, in my show. 
but most of the show was as a pop pop singer that sort of thing now my my lyrics are better and um i think better um uh, the the my performance is is better because i i've just said what you know what can they do to me i, I, I let's just do it let's try it and then something works and it leads to something else and uh, it's very exciting you got to have passion in your life and i think the biggest thing to figure out is what you what do you what do you really want uh, out of life i think most people really can't decide what they want and I wrestle with it too. And so, uh, and then sometimes you you forget. Oh yeah, that's why I did that because I wanted that. Why am I not doing that anymore? And getting back, self discovery, that is what life's all about. And the more you know about yourself and what you really like doing, uh, the, the more successful that becomes. And uh, and uh, I think people like to be with people who are excited about something. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You yeah. are you are a true menopause man because you are you are following your passion and you're still enjoying your life and it shows. I mean, for you to even do this with us, you know, is 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 nice and that you're you're able to continue to share your thoughts and and positive attitude towards life and and it really will help our audience for sure because our audience is between 50 and 80, right? And, and just to be able to share that with them is great. Now you live on a boat several months out of the year, right? In Mexico, How, it must be a hell of a big boat. What do you no. do on the boat? What, <laughs> what do you do on that boat? Well, first of all, it's not a big boat. Uh, um, I, I bought it because it's very used. It was built in 79. This is not a pleasure yacht. It's a little, de it's a little diesel trawler and, um, uh, <laughs> It's a twin engine and, and it has one master state room and then a little guest room up forward. It's really very small. It would only be right for uh, two people, you know, a guy and his wife or, uh, or and, and any two people. And um, I, what do I do? I, I, I scuba and I have a little bit, not much anymore, but I, I snorkel. I like to snorkel. I have wetsuits and stuff. Um, I'm only here on the boat maybe four, four months, four or five months a year. Otherwise, I'm up in Sandwich. I, I, I consider that Sandwich, New Hampshire is where I live now. I grew up in West Bridgewater, Massachusetts. So I have a New England roots. And uh, when I first came back to New England after, after the uh, Broadway show tours uh, stopped, I lived in Western Mass in the Berkshires. A lot of people from New York live there. And then I began looking at New Hampshire and I found I could get much more for my money. So I bought an old farmhouse in, in Sandwich and, and, and moved here. Um, what did you ask me? I'm, I'm losing track. Why would you say what do you do on a obsessed boat? with I mean, your for, boat? He's obsessed. Yeah, I'm, I'm so <laughs> interested in to see how you live on a boat for that long. I mean, it's well, there's always something to fix and something to work on. Um, I I do a little painting and varnishing, but I, I have a guy that helps me do that, and um, I, I have collected nautical antiques. I, I like to uh, read a lot, so I have a special place where I read and, and uh, I write songs. And I, uh, I'm i in this marina right now and, and I have to be careful when I sing because I, I have a Broadway voice and so I, <laughs> you know, I don't want to get complaints from my neighbors, but um, yeah, I write songs. I, I use Alexa to research. I just ask Alexa to, to uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just said I just said her name and she just woke up. Yeah, you um, also started mine over here too. So, uh, oh, okay. uh, so I let's I, call uh, her Jenny. Let's call her Jenny for right now. Yeah, yeah. So I I say Jenny, play uh, this or that <laughs> that song from whenever, and it's amazing that the library that that she has in there. Just you know, Amazon is incredible. Yeah. So. Um, but, and I have friends over, I, I can I can make dinner, I have a little galley. And uh, I go beach combing, I play bocce on the beach with friends and uh, I walk along, it's called the Malacon here in La Paz. La Paz is a, just a very pretty place. It's it's close to Cabo San Lucas, but it's but it's two hours away and it's not it's not the meat market that Cabo is. Yeah, Cabo is very beautiful, but this is not the swinging place of in Baja. It's, it's uh, mm -hmm. 
I think there's a lot of retirees here, and it's uh, it's quieter than Cabo San Lucas. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. So I, uh, I I have an international plan on my phone, so I'll be talking to friends all the time in the states. So very close. Yeah. So tell me, I, I want I want our our uh, listeners to know more about this club sandwich thing because uh, you know I went on and looked at it, and. Another another uh, sign that your ego doesn't get in the way is the fact that it's a fairly small venue. I mean, it's what, 50, 60 seats, something like that? 40. Uh, 40. 40. Yeah. So, so it, you know, it really is a very intimate setting that allows you to really almost do a one-on-one -on -one with people, you know, look at them well, and, and address them. That's the them. deal. Yeah. And that's, that's fascinating. That's the beauty of it. You can, instead of being in a huge place with there's um, hundreds of people in front of you, you, you've got a, every seat is a front row seat and it's a very intimate show. It's a very honest show. And so I talk about things that I mean, I maybe wouldn't talk about in other shows. And um, I, I revealed anything about myself. But I, don't, I don't think you could, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's very intimate. And that, uh, uh, that's that's the fun of it is is having a small place like that because it's sold out. Every one of my shows is sold out. It has been for two years now, and uh, we haven't opened up our tickets for we, we opened June second, and we haven't opened up the ticketing yet. But I've gotten a great response from people from New Hampshire, but also they come from Connecticut and Maine and Massachusetts and New York and Pennsylvania, and um, um, I've had some some. Uh, great uh, support from uh, the Washington Post did an article about it. It was that when and that was on the uh, what's the um, Hollywood uh, like a, a that's a, that uh, that's entertainment right so a, a daily Entertain show that, that, that entertainment tonight well that it's like that but it's not that but it's the new uh, anyway they did a segment on they came out and, and uh, videoed a segment and uh, it's uh, so so it so it's, it's gone very well I'm, I'm not a good businessman, uh, and there's not a lot of money coming through here, so there's no problem. Well, didn't uh, you have a show in Branson? I mean, that was your show, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was, but but uh, uh, and that that held uh, six, seven hundred people. Right, I, I did, but I uh, I didn't know what I was doing financially, and, ah. and uh, lost lost a lot of money there. But um, I love doing those shows, but. It, with Club Sandwich, I'm paying, I'm making enough to pay my rent. I rent an apartment above <laughs> Club Sandwich, and uh, it's good. See, my my wife and I recently uh, separated, mm. and uh, uh, that's uh, we don't need to go into that very much. But I, we've been uh, separated for years, but living in the same house, and now we actually separated because we both have dreams we want to do. Uh, I, I won't say any more about that. But so I'm I'm living as a single guy, and. Uh, uh, I I just I'm so lucky I'm just so lucky now to have uh, enough money to to uh, to have a boat and an apartment or a little little place in the sandwich. So, is well, that open year round or is it only open when you perform there? It's only June, July, August, September, October. It's six months. It opens six months of the year. Yeah, and I present guest performers every Thursday night. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, have, you and I could go there and. And sing and dance, you know, like we often do. Right. Uh, I, I would have to look. I'd have to see what you got. <laughs> it um, ain't much. I can tell you, know, you that's that right true. now. Uh, but let me. I, I want to ask you also. Uh, uh, again, it was I, I didn't know about your you and your wife, but you, you both developed this game, which I think uh, is really cool. That borderline USA. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I tell you, I think some of the adults in this country could use that as well. <laughs> uh, but it's it's a it's a fascinating game the way you put it together uh, yeah. for we, having fun and memorizing all that stuff. Thanks for bringing that up. We we homeschooled our daughter, um, and she's now in her thirties. But when when she was a little kid, we used to play all sorts of games, and we created this geography oversized card game where cards are bigger than regular cards. And so you in border it's called Borderline USA. You can play, there are 50 state cards, one for each state. There's a Mexico card, there's a Canada card, Great Lakes is all, there's, there's, there's uh, four water cards, Gulf of Mexico, Great Lakes, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, and there's some wild cards. 
The idea is to get rid of your cards first, just like in Uno. Mm -hmm. But in Uno, you're matching colors and numbers. In Borderline, you're matching borders. For example, brilliant. Uh, uh, in I live in New Hampshire, so if somebody played the New Hampshire card, what could I play on top of New Hampshire? Well, you look at the back of the card. E each card has a little individual map that nobody else has. So you're looking at these little maps on the back of the card. Oh, I see uh, Maine borders New Hampshire and uh, Atlantic Ocean and Canada and Vermont and, and Massachusetts. I think that's about it. So you, it, it doesn't just test you. It, it teaches you where the states are. But the beauty of it that kids love is you can bluff. You can play Tennessee. You can play Tennessee on New Hampshire if nobody catches you. Ah, there so it is right there. Make That's sure it. that every, everybody uh, everybody pays attention. They'll say, I challenge. And if, and if you're caught bluffing, then you pay a penalty in cards. And it's a fun little game, Borderline USA. I think it's hmm. great. And I think, you know, for grandparents and parents to get that for your kids, not only is it an educational game, but it's right. fun to play with your kids. So I think that's I think that's awesome. And where do you, do you get that, that? on Amazon? Get it on, yeah, Amazon. Uh, it is available on Amazon, but it, but uh, it's at it's at johndavidson.com. We we there sell you it go. from oh, your website. my website. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I sell it at Club Sandwich, and uh, uh, yeah, we ship them out from johndavidson.com. All right, okay. we're gonna so it's better to there actually there buy it from there. Yeah. Then you don't have to pay that commission to the Amazon people. Right. Let it, let it right. Happen. Yeah. We're this is the this is the business portion of this uh this <laughs> yeah, podcast right. is we're gonna tell you go to johndavidson.com and buy that game. Do right. not go to Amazon. Right. Unless you have to. Well, plus when you get there, you can read all the other stuff and watch some of your videos. You have some right. really good videos on there. Uh a, a list of uh, you know, I don't think people realize that you, you did made at least 12 albums. Um yeah. Uh, and yeah. so do you sell the CDs of that too, or, or people yeah. just download that? No, I have, uh, they can download uh, from the website and I sell my CDs at, at the, uh, nobody's buying CDs like they used to, but right. you, right. can, you can, you can download tunes from the, from the website. I've got some interesting videos on there, a, a duet with Mama Cass, uh, Cass wow. Elliott Knight, a, du duet, a duet with uh, Julie Andrews, um, but really beautiful. Uh, a duet with K Karen Carpenter, um, uh, a, bu a bunch of different duets with different, from all the variety shows. I did so many variety shows. Yeah. So you, you've worked with everybody. I mean, literally pretty much everybody out there. If you were to go back or if you could do it now, who would you like to work with? Mm. Who would be the person that you'd like to perform with right now? Oh, well, I mean, it's just the list is endless but um i i like to to hang out with people who are honest with themselves and 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 aren't 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 who are open open and who are excited about life excited about what they're doing and um you know it, there was a time when everybody wanted betty white which she's gone now but yeah. everybody wanted betty white to be on the show because just so clever and so mischievous she, she was mm -hmm. full of mischief um I don't, uh, let me put it this way. I don't know of anybody <laughs> that I, who's alive that I wouldn't want to uh, work with. Um, uh, the series I did with Sally Field. Oh man, I had such a crush on Sally Field. Um, Who didn't? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. An incredible actor and just a, man, what a great lady. Um, How about any of the uh, artists around today? that you would want to collaborate with? <laughs> well, Billy Joel, but the, 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 you, the, that, there's a guy in my, my age group. Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't, um, I, I, who do I listen to that's, that's, that's under the age of 25? Probably nobody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me there. I couldn't name anybody. I couldn't probably. name anybody either. I was thinking yeah. more of like Michael, Michael Buble or somebody like that. You know, sure. Yeah, I, I don't know him at all. I never met him. Um, I I don't know. I, you know, um, I've often found that people in show business, working entertainers, are hard to become close friends with. I, uh, I I knew Kenny Rogers very well, and at that time it was his wife Marianne, and we hung out a little bit. And I 
I thought, geez, this is a great, Kenny Rogers was a great guy. And I thought, I'm, I'm going to work at making him my friend because our, <laughs> wife, our, our wives got along. And, and uh, uh, so I began I be calling and well, what, this, that. And he invited me to his place in Georgia. He had a farm in Georgia for a while, Athens, Georgia. And so we went there and did that. But then he, he never did pick up the ball. He never did. I don't think he wanted to be close to anybody. And I find that true of a lot of, of entertainers, but mm. to really have a close relationship with them, uh, it's it's very hard. First of all, they're gyps we're, I'm in the gypsy business, we're always traveling. Mm. And um, I think I think uh, there's, there's uh, I, people who do what I do are like I am in that you spend a lot of time alone. And, and uh, I like that, I love being with people. But I, I don't mind being alone. I don't mind just being with myself. Um, you, fi you find that the people that who are available to do stuff with you are not the most successful people because they're out of work. <laughs> if, if people, the people who are working a lot and the people I admire really don't have time for a buddy relationship with, with me. Uh, maybe I mean I can name uh, ten people out of all the people I've known who I really would like a close relationship and, and I think would reciprocate. It's always amazing the close relationship between like Don Rickles and Bob Newhart, you know, they right. were very, very close. Um, well, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they, but know. they collaborated on a lot of stuff. So they were kind of working together a lot. We're, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. They, they, the whole Rat Pack thing. Um, I don't know how close it was Sammy Davis Jr. And all. I'm not sure how close that was maybe it was maybe it was mm -hmm. i i think uh people who uh expose themselves a lot i, I don't i don't mean being naked i mean just expose yeah. yourself yeah mike does uh, that but uh it doesn't get him any <laughs> friends at all uh. But, uh, i was very i was very shy as a kid and and i found that being on stage was a way for me to open up and be able to get people to listen to me and communicate. And I, I could kind of go crazy on stage. Um, I think a lot of entertainers are like that. And, and but deep down, we're very, very private people, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you worked with Karen Carpenter. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what a, what a, what a voice. beautiful voice. What a voice. Beautiful yeah. person. Yeah. Gone way too soon. You don't Yeah, I actually dated her once in between my two marriages. I've been uh, married twice. Um, I had a date with Karen Carpenter, took her to a thing, and uh, she was very, very shy and, and so, sort of uh, socially awkward. She, she didn't have the, oh, the schmooze skills that you would expect. Just, just, I mean, she was wonderful, just a very kind, thoughtful person. Mm -hmm. But uh, I found that she was... Uh, uh, so shy that uh, she didn't seem to. I didn't. I. I uh, she didn't seem to want to uh, ever. Uh, uh, I, I. I don't know. What, what, what am I trying to say? It, it was just. It was a. It was not an evening that I enjoyed that much because, uh, although I respect her and, and really, uh, it was nice. But she's very, uh, she's very, very shy. Mm. What am I trying to say? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you you um, you're on the market again. I mean, can we say that? Can we what say that, that you are dating? Uh, you're available for dates or Mike? No, calm down. You know? You're married man. Leave uh, me alone. No, I was thinking no. about for my wife. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I have a sweetheart. I, I have a sweetheart. I have a oh good a, good a girlfriend right. who, I, who I love love very much, and uh, we're just we're just not. Uh, you know, out there, or anything we just, uh, but I have a very wonderful, wonderful sweetheart in my life that I'm That's very awesome. excited. Beside. I never thought I would be romantic at 81, but yeah, I'm, I'm very much in love with someone and, and, uh, uh, I'll let it go with that. Great. Well, that's awesome.
Well, you know, this has been amazing. We're so thankful that you were able to to give us your time. And you really are an inspiration in terms of, I mean, for our generation, like I said, I mean, we used to see you all the time. And for us to be talking to you is 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 pretty exciting. But the most exciting part, the reason I contacted you was because of the fact that that you're still passionate about your life, about your uh, career, about music, about living your life. And that's what we're trying to to tell our followers. So you're you're sort of a, as Mike said, you're sort of a classic example of what we want a menopause man to be. It's like, don't let don't let age slow you down. Follow your passions. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate you saying that, guys. Thanks. And uh, good luck with the show. And you're doing great. You're Thank doing you. it right. I think. You're, Can I you're... put you on the spot for one <laughs> second as we close? Just one what? thing. Can what? you sing something for us as we the the to, you know the uh, goodbye song? How's that? You know what I uh, what would be great is you uh, did the Fantastics, and there was that song "Try to Remember," which I think is actually very apropos uh, in our society right now. I don't know if you still remember the words for that, but that was a great song. Yeah, uh, yeah, just... Acapella. Uh, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> ah, this is great. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I was going to Yes, ask ladies and gentlemen, song. we're going to have John Davidson sing a song. He's going to be busking on his boat. <laughs> So throw tips to Mexico. Okay. Uh oh, there it is. I'm not even sure this is tuned. Is it? Nice guitar. No, yeah. well, it really is. This though, this is my beach guitar. It's I, uh, I painted it myself. It's a it's a ninety dollar guitar. It's nothing, but I can take it on the beach and sing sing Michael rode the boat ashore around a campfire. <laughs> I remember I September when life was so and all so pleasant. I do remember when life was so tender that no one where except except the willow. <laughs> Try to remember when life was so tender that love was an ember about to blow. Try to remember and remember hollow, hollow. Oh, that's all I got. That oh, is man. great. That was awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Wow. And you do. You still have it. You still it's got. Bad. You still yeah. got the. You still got the control there. Sounds Ooh. good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks that's a lot, great. John. Have a safe uh, uh, vacation down there. And thanks, guys. good luck to you. And hopefully, one of these days, we can stop by Club Sandwich. It's great. Club thanks, Sandwich. Guys. Yes. All the best. Take care. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.